Imagine a dark forest at night. It's deadly quiet. Nothing moves, nothing steers. This could lead one to assume that the forest is devoid of life. But of course it's not. The dark forest is full of life. It's quiet because night is when the predators come out. To survive, the animals stay silent. Is our universe an empty forest or a dark one? If it's a dark forest, then only Earth is foolish enough to ping the heavens and announce its presence. The rest of the universe already knows the real reason why the forest stays dark. It's only a matter of time before the Earth learns as well. Hello again everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of Odd Curiosities. I'm Dom, your host, and today we're going to talk about the dark forest theory and why aliens haven't contacted us yet. In a previous episode about curiosities, we have discussed about the zoo hypothesis, a theory based on the Fermi paradox, and you can find the link to that episode up here or in the description down below, so you can go and have a look. But, in short, the zoo hypothesis assumes that we are in a galactic quarantine, where alien civilizations are watching us, waiting for us to evolve just enough to understand them, without interfere with our evolution. Another theory based on the Fermi paradox is the Dark Forest Theory, which arises from Liu Cixin's novel The Dark Forest, and is an attempt to answer the question of the Fermi paradox. If there are many other alien civilizations out there, why they haven't contacted us? The Dark Forest Theory is in short an exploration of why we have so far seen no signs of alien life, when we should statistically be able to see at least 10 thousands of them in the universe, 20 of those alien civilizations existing somewhere nearby, on a cosmic scale, of course. These numbers come from the Drake Equation, conceived by the astronomer Frank Drake in 1961. The equation is an estimate of how many civilizations should exist in our galaxy by examining the many factors that might play a role in their development. In the Drake equation, n is equal to the number of civilizations in our galaxy with which we should be able to communicate. r is the galaxy's average rate of star formation per year. fp is the number of stars with planets, and E is the number of those planets capable of developing an ecosystem, FL is planets where life develops, FE is the planets that develop intelligent life, that's a notable distinction, FC is the portion of those life forms which develop interstellar communication, and L is the average length of time civilizations survive and are able to send out communications. This is a probabilistic estimate of the numbers of intelligent civilizations in the Milky Way galaxy. An intelligent civilization, as Drake defined it, is one advanced enough to communicate with other extraterrestrial civilizations. The Drake equation was not an attempt to quantify intelligent civilization precisely but to invoke humans' curiosity of aliens' existence. But back to the Dark Forest theory now. Chixin describes the Dark Forest theory in his trilogy Remembrance of Earth's Past. He writes, The universe is a dark forest. Every civilization is an armed hunter stalking through the trees like a ghost, gently pushing aside branches that block the path and trying to tread without sound. Even breathing is done with care. The hunter has to be careful, because everywhere in the forest are stealthy hunters like him. If he finds another life, another hunter, angel or a demon, a delicate infant to tottering old man, a fairy or demigod, there's only one thing he can do. Open fire and eliminate them. Dark Forest theory states that our galaxy does contain civilizations in abundance. 
the civilizations have still intentionally foregone communicating with others out of fear that other civilizations might destroy them. The theory also states that civilizations that have not practiced this caution have already been destroyed under such circumstances. The Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Institute, or SETI in short, says that the theory is plausible. The official policy within the SETI community is only to collect information and not respond to any signal or evidence of extraterrestrial intelligence, out of fear that this could be the end of life on Earth. But let's verify Chixin's conclusion, starting with two axioms. The first one, any given civilization's goal is survival. And the second one, civilizations continuously outgrow and expand, but resources in the universe are finite. Given these axioms and the physical nature of the universe in which stars are extremely distant from one another, Communication between civilizations would initially take place at a drastically slow rate of tens to hundreds of years, since the speed of light is limiting us. Chixin describes a chain of suspicion that is created between any two civilizations as they cannot confidently evaluate an honest intention or a potential threat the other poses. By the time civilization has gathered enough information to consider another unnegotiable, that other civilization could well be on the way to destroy them. Furthermore, leaving a less technologically advanced civilization alone is not necessarily a safe option, due to the potential for exponential and unpredictable technologically advancement rates a civilization can undergo. Even if a civilization's technological progress never outpaces that of another's, it could broadcast information about that civilization to other civilizations, who might themselves be more technologically advanced and decide to destroy it. This manner of thinking is supported by physicist and NASA consultant David Brin in explaining the utter silence of space. In fact, it would only take one civilization thinking this way to produce the lack of radio signals we have observed over the past century. As soon as other intelligent life forms discovered and began using radio, they would be eradicated by a more advanced civilization. But doesn't this mean that humanity too is already doomed? Even beyond the purposeful signals we have sent into space in an attempt to communicate, we have also been giving off the signals daily over the past few decades as we watch TV, use our phone and peruse the night beneath those flickering streetlights. Perhaps the aliens out there are watching an old episode of some TV show. I demand to know what happened to the plucky lawyer and her compellingly short garment. Well, not exactly. Signals that are just a product of our everyday life tend to be faint and aimless, making them much less likely to give us away than a signal we consciously direct towards another planet. But there lies one of the problems with this theory. Is it possible to have a civilization that's always completely hidden and silent? And even if it is, can this silence be guaranteed for long periods of time? If there was an alien civilization stalking the galaxy for any sign of life, surely they would have already detected Earth and decided to attack. Unless they have detected Earth and exist camouflaged somewhere in the night sky, patient and observing. Another possible flaw in the dark forest theory is that these alien civilizations will not consider the value of alliances. As a species who had to come together to achieve interstellar trouble, it is likely they'll understand the rewards of cooperation and the possibility of trade, not just in resources, but in knowledge. Historically, however, the possibility of alliances hasn't stopped humans from warring with one another. Liu answered this critique of his theory by bringing up a chain of suspicion. 
even if two societies were able to communicate, there would still be incredible distances to surmount, both physically and in terms of culture and language. If another civilization is younger than one's own, they might seem to pose no threat at first, but this wide distance and time span between the two worlds mean an uncertainty of how fast the older civilization is evolving. Technology doesn't follow a linear path, instead it develops exponentially, turning a now harmless and young civilization into a threat as they advance in leaps. When everything is at stake, it's easy to see why extraterrestrial life forms might view communication as too high risk to entertain. David Brin is not the only scientist to consider this a plausible scenario. Stephen Hawking and other scientists have also warned against searching so boldly for extraterrestrial life. Even a petition has been signed to prevent humans from actively sending signals into space, disclosing information about us and our location. This opens up the discussion to the broader question of who can make the decision that we should be attempting to communicate with other beings? Who can decide on behalf of planet as a whole? The Dark Forest Theory is an examination of life on Earth, how we treat one another, our propensity both for violence and for cooperation, our ability both to consider and disregard life. The theory applies these characteristics to the great beyond, the voids of space which might harbor life that might follow a similar way of thinking and acting. One of the biggest consolation walking the streets of Earth at night is that even if one confronts another person, one, one can still appeal to their humanity. We can all understand desires and fears, but that's not a guarantee when addressing civilizations in space. Would it be better if the, their nature was similar to ours? Or should we hope to find a very different race under those warm yellow streetlights? Perhaps we will find a society kinder than ours and wiser. Perhaps not. What are your thoughts on the dark forest theory? Do you believe that fear of being destroyed is the reason why no other civilization is sending signals out in space? Or do you believe more that we are in a galactic quarantine, like the zoo hypothesis says, where aliens are out there just watching us and waiting for us to evolve without interfere? But with those two theories, all the questions arise. If aliens are just watching us or hiding, who are the ones in the UFO scene around the world in modern and past times? How about the abduction? Who performs them? Well, those are topics for the next video, where we will talk about another theory of who might be behind those UFOs, encounters and abductions. Aliens or humans? To know more, just hit the subscribe to show your support and the bell button to be updated on any new videos coming up next. And if you want to step up with the support, you can simply buy me a coffee. It's a small donation, but means the world to me. Big thank you goes to all the people that are already supporting me in this journey. Thank you very much, you are the best. And with this, we arrive at the end of another episode. Hope you all enjoyed this new video, and if you did so, then hit the like button. And if you want to let me know your ideas or have any question, then just leave a comment in the comment section down below and I'll try to answer as much as I can. Keep yourself healthy and safe. Grazie a tutti e ci vediamo alla prossima. Ciao.